let's just... Let's just intro this shit. Excuse my language. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Zerg Academy Neuro Studies. This is not for you, primarily. Well, maybe you will learn too. But right now, I'm gonna go study from Lambo. It's kind of like when Gandalf needed to go seek counsel. Even though Gandalf is really strong, and he had a bunch of cool like wizard spells and shit, he still had much to learn, and there were people who knew more than he did about stuff. I've been GM Zerg for 30 odd seasons of StarCraft II. Does that mean I know everything about Zerg? No. Are there Zergs who know way more than me about the game? Yes. One such Zerg is Lambo. And Lambo creates some really awesome YouTube videos. Since he's like top eight GM EU, all of the stuff that he is doing would be really useful for me to study in depth. So we're gonna go through and I'm going to see a lot of his benchmarks, see what advice he has to give, write some stuff down. I've got this right here. This is a notebook. It's kind of scuffed because my apartment got flooded from upstairs and it got wet, but the paper works and I will write upon it with this. And then we're gonna go into my replays where I tried to go against Terran and see the differences between Lambo's Lingvane Muta and my games and see where am I falling behind? Because if I'm a thousand or more MMR behind him, there must be some difference in the play. And now is the time we're gonna try to figure out where that is. I did my diligence so that Lambo will not DMCA me, and I said, hey, can I study your videos on stream? And he said that I should knock myself out. So, I'm just kidding. Okay. Here's the video that we'll be going over. <clears throat> and I'll fire up my StarCraft client as well and try to get into a ZVT. A ZVT replay situation. You, yeah, people, even if someone hacked into my laptop, cellular phone, computer, the paper is safe. I would only lose these paper notes in the case of bandits or burglars. That kind of thing. Okay, so we are looking through for a ZVT. I lost a bunch of ZVTs during Samurai stream, so that's fantastic. You might feel a little bit defeated when you have a losing streak in a matchup, but really, that is opponents pointing toward something you can learn from, which is that you're bad at the matchup. ZVT, let's just take a quick pass at my win rate. We're 53%, but that can be better. My ZVZ has not been super great this season. Well, that's okay. Let's find a ZVT. I think this one should be fine. Just for a game versus bio. But I'm gonna pause this and then we're gonna study some Lambo. Lambo, what do you have for us? StarCraft II is hard. ZVT is hard. How are you playing this? Hard Thursday video. In this game, I'm gonna be playing against Clem. So this was a letter game from today's stream, and I will be talking about my thoughts that I had during the game. This was a pretty interesting game with a lot of back and forth. I think uh, the advantage kind of um, went from one play to another quite a lot. So I'm gonna be talking a lot about why that happened. And Let me know if this volume is better. better. Um, and just about the general game plan. I, I will also be talking a lot about eye movement and that sort of stuff because that's very important about T in, in, in ZVT especially, but uh, let's focus on the early game first. So I started this game with a 16 hatch and then 18 gas 17 pool. This will be the beginning of literally every video pr probably, unless I, I might 12 pool in some. Some, but uh, this is just a normal opener for Zerg. I'm scouting around a little bit for a proxy barracks with the first two overlords. 
and then you just really the next couple that's of That's something different from what I do. Usually I send the first overlord directly across and then I look for the natural. He's sending his. If you look at the mini map here, I can just full screen this. If you're looking at the mini map here, he's sending his first overlord this way. Kind of past the third base location. And this one looks like it's going more direct. So first overlord that would be Oscar is his name, goes over third base for proxy. Superb. Into the gas. On pillars, it's actually pretty easy to scout. Most um, common proxy rex locations with just your first two overlords in time to uh, even cancel your gas when you see the barracks. So. More often it's like a second one, he sent it out and then like sent it back. Proxy barracks at super far away, or a proxy reaper at my fifth base location, slash sixth base, depending on in which order you take it. So, But if that's the case, you want the gas anyways, so that's fine. And then at 20, I go for the overlord. This game, I, sometimes I go for uh, hatchery before the overlord, so I would have had one more drone, but then the overlord a little bit later. Um, sometimes I also just go for a 28 hatch with a 27 overlord. All of these uh, differences in the early game are very minor and it's very important on a high level to mix those up. Because if you always will skip your speed then you might get surprised. That's a good point. So he's talking about should you go for a 20 overlord and then take your third base later? Or should you take your third before the overlord? And he's saying don't do the same thing every time because if I always try to take a third base before uh, link speed and before the overlord, then Terran will patrol their SCV back and forth and it can mess up your build. So we'll say a note here for mix up third timing versus overlord. at 20. Mix it up. Lower level players probably doesn't matter. They're not going to face you that many times. This would be specifically for when you're facing the same opponent multiple times and they're starting to figure out what your uh, game plan is. It's by a surprise proc uh, uh, not proxy, by a surprise 3 Rex Reaper for example, where you're just not going to have Zergling speed so that, that will be very annoying. Um, Especially if you don't scout. Notice his ling movement here. This is pretty cool to see. His lings are basically being move commanded around the drones, like right by the drones. Whenever the Reaper moves up to shoot the drones, he has his lings move command in front, kind of like to shield them a little bit. Uh, not proxy, but as a price through Rex Reaper for But he doesn't want to chase the Reaper uh, in front of the drones. The Lings are purely here to punish the Reaper for focusing drones. They're not here to try to kill the Reaper. Where you're just not going to have Zergling speed, so that, that will be very annoying. Um, Clicks back low Lings sometimes. Rex right away. So and, and I, I, I micro the Zerglings very passively, by the way, because... Um, okay, so Lings. Move command. To shield drones. We'll say to shield attacked drone. But do not chase. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to have as much... Like, I just didn't want to lose any Zerglings. It's not super important to get any damage done against the Reaper on, on maps where you have a high ground to work with, so... Uh, usually I would try to get some hits in with the Zerglings and lose some more HP and usually I'm fine with that because that means that I will be able to get the creep tumor down a lot more aggressively but not the case here here I I need to attack the Reaper because I actually put the tumor and just for a note he is going creep tumor at Nat inject in main for the first one I want to pay really close attention to how he's managing his queens too, because I suspect that that's a pretty big difference in our ability, is all of his queen decisions are going to be on average smarter than mine will. So creep nat first. 
I am doing that sometimes. A little bit too far forward, so I end up losing a Zergling. It's always better to lose a Zergling than one of the early creep tumors, 100%. Worth it. The way I positioned my Overlord was so I can see the Hellions that are moving out without the Hellions necessarily. Yeah, you see that there? Paying super close attention. And it is He's got his Overlord at the Hellion move out lane. That's a cool spot for it. So forward Overlord. And that looks like that was his first Overlord. He sent it to the third and then to the main. Or to this spot. So forward Overlord. Scouts Hellion move out. Okay. Is in position that if he is going for a 2cc build that I would sacrifice the overlord in. So we're going for additional queens. We have three queens out right now. I'm going for five queens right now. Overall, I'm going up to eight, I believe. And we're mostly just making... So he goes up to eight queens. It looks like he has two spreading creep right now and probably two Jones. injecting. I'm making sure at this moment in time that, yeah, this is the first time I saw the Hellions on the minimap, so I, I, I put the tumors very far forward. Usually, if the Hellions were there, I would have put them first at the front and then to the side, so um, add them one by one. Now I'm going to try to run in with the Zergling to check if there are any, um, how many depots there are on the front. Also, I, I have the Oblord in a position where it should see a Medivac leaving for a Hellbat attack. Uh, here he's forcing me to make a couple of spore crawlers, so that's a little bit annoying, but we get a reaper for it, so that's fine by me. And we get the scout that it is in fact a banshee opening, which is cool. So now I'm So that was around a 420 scout that he did. 420 scout. And I'll also add that the forward overlord scouts Hellion move out plus Medivac for Hellbat. That's something that has been killing me a lot in ZVTs is a really committed Marauder Hellbat Viking timing or just the Marine Hellbat Medivac timing. Heckbats are very common right now in the ZVT meta. So uh, that Overlord positioning I feel is really smart. So he has it right here on this high ground spot. So if Hellions are driving on the shortest rush path, they usually head toward your third. If they went the other way, it's much longer rush. So you can anticipate a lot of your opponent's moves by knowing the shortest rush paths for things. And if they did take the longer rush path, by the time they get to you, you would just have more stuff. So it's not even really that good for them to do that. I'm going for a lair and the bailing nest, even though I know it's 3cc because there were no depots at the front, uh, they do sometimes go for these very delayed helmet pushes. So He knows that it's 3cc because there are no depots at the front. I did not know that. So that's a way that you can make an inference based on a scout of something that tells you something else. So he doesn't see the third CC directly, but that would be 400 minerals, or actually, yeah, 400 minerals for the command center, and then another 150 for the orbital. So that's like five and a half depots. So he's saying 420 scout if no depots at nat. 3cc. Just going for a little bit of an early layer, it seems fine. And at this moment in time, we're just making a couple extra zerglings in case he wants to run by. I saw that his aliens were very late, right? So I was. I want to look and see point. when he dropped his bandits. Do sometimes go for this very delay. And we get the scout that it is in fact a bench. So he took a 430 layer and a gas. And that's in the main. And probably a bane nest right with it. Yep. That's all one step. So 430 layer gas main and bane nest. Fantastic. For a layer and the baneling nest, even though I know it's 3cc because there were no depots at the front, uh, they do sometimes go for these very delayed helmet pushes. So just going for a little bit of an early layer, it seems fine. 
And at this moment in time, we're just making a couple extra Zerglings in case he wants to run by. I saw that his aliens were very late, right? So I was pretty sure already that was 3cc, which meant that I didn't need to make any extra Zerglings early on. Work order on third base is slightly too late, but 3cc Banshee hits very, very late with the clock. So like, uh, if you make your spore like 4, 40, it's uh, fine. 440 spore versus 3cc Banshee. Got it. So to quantify one thing here, four forty spores as compared to four thirty spores. Four thirty spore would be the standard. It's banshee, but it's not three cc quick strat, and you have the spores done in time to defend against the banshee. But if he gets the read that it's three cc really fast with the third orbital. The Hellion Banshee is more of like a safe setup where they can defend Ravager cheeses. It's not something that has great potential for aggressive damage. You wouldn't be going for a super greedy third CC and then also all inning at the same time. The Banshee is mainly so the Terran has a way to not die. So by delaying Spore for 10 seconds, that's one drone per base that would be a Spore that gets to mine for 10 more seconds. So you've got 30 seconds additional of drone mining time if you delay the spores by 10 seconds each. That's 30 extra minerals right there by making that adjustment. And that kind of really small fine tune adjustment is something that I'm not making in my play. Uh, I don't really have all this knowledge that he's talking about. So this stuff is new, it's refreshing and it's cool. Uh, but at a lower level, usually it's better to just have consistency because you're working on memorizing everything. And then as you get higher, higher up in skill, you can be adjusting more and more to what your opponent is doing and cutting corners where they allow you to. That's really the mark of not just playing the game well, but playing your opponent and playing your opponent's performance in this match is by doing stuff like, what did he do here? He did a 420 scout with his overlord and the ling check in the depot count. And that told him 3cc build, I can cut a corner of 430 spore by doing 440 spore. It's a small adjustment, but that's 30 minerals. That's almost a drone. That's uh, the, the, the timing that I was going for this game. And we're just trying to get a good crew spread done right now. He's also got 16 lings, which is a good thing to know. We'll say eight queens plus 16 lings. And not lose too many queens. I went for, I believe, nine queens this game. It's very nice against Banshee and many Hellbats, especially to get a couple extra queens. I think that's good. Now, once all my mineral lines are saturated, now I take the extra gases. Make sure to not take your extra gases too early, even though I want to go Muta eventually this game. I played it super safe with I take the extra it's very nice against Banshee and many Hellbats, especially to get a couple extra queens. I think that's good. Now, once all my mineral lines are saturated, now I take the extra gases. Okay, so this is around 530. I'll just give a few different cues for this. 530, which is also 90-ish supply. He's taking fourth base. Let's see how many gases he takes. All of them? That would be four more if he takes the rest. Make sure to not take your extra gases too early, even though I want to go Muta eventually this game. I played it super safe with the forest spore. I don't think that's actually necessary if you go for an early layer, by the way. Uh, because I would have just had an overseer in time anyways, for if you would have wanted to hit with two benches and hellbats. But it's nice you can move the spore away to the, um, to the fourth base. So overall, pretty clean early game. But obviously our opponent is playing 3cc, so we're not massively ahead. Um, Thank you, Convenge, with the game. I, Appreciate I you. I invested my <clears> gas, <throat> by the way, in the, the, the first 150 gas into bailing speed, and now we're getting a Spire. I forgot my 6 gas, that should have already been done here. 545 2x Evo. Good call. And then we'll just say plus Spire, he kind of took that at a similar time. And now it's pretty much all about deflecting the Hellions and 
uh, taking care of your creep. So yeah, a lot of this right now is macro management. I was a little bit slow there with filling up my... Okay, so the emphasis here is creep and block hellions. I guess, so I had problems starting my 1-1 on time and we're not gonna get a lot of mutas right away, so I started my 1-1 one, one, one by one. And yeah, right, right now we're starting Tys to make units Dingle because we're to get ready for the first two medevacs. He did go for two starport units, cloak and eight hellions, so the first two medevacs at earliest could arrive at like seven minutes. Thank you, Valen. So if you have an early game like this, I think you guys can go up to around 80 workers, I think is fine. Uh, we'll see how many I will go up to. My fourth hatch hatchery wasn't super early, and I'm playing it very safe with the amount of zerglings. You will see 80 drones, really? See is, uh, okay. <laughs> how funny would it be? So, just for my... Just to be clear, I trust Lambo's advice. I don't think he's bamboozling people. But imagine if you actually did bamboozle people, that you, like, build up your career as a content creator of teaching people StarCraft Two and all these builds and timings, and you're just really looking out for people and helping them learn and improve and all this and then in just one of your videos you just have a, a booby trap of like all right now here you're gonna drone here to to 85 workers and he just knows <laughs> that'd be pretty funny the vex leaving very soon and i could have made a lot more uh, drones so that's a mistake I, sh I should have already went up to 80 drones for sure no matter what pretty much i'm making the drones right now so it's not the worst like i see i see the medevax leaving right now and you, you can see that I'm more than prepared for those. We're then loading right now. We got two marines, which is nice. And now our spire is done, so we make mutas right away. The moment the spire is done, we also scouted that he's going for widow mines. And um, and yeah. Like, uh, in, in, in ZVT, there's really not that much to talk about. It's pretty much just what can your opponent have on the map. And it's, it's mostly about army positioning, army splitting, and when to engage. So if, the, if there's nothing happening, there's so much so much mechanical stuff that you need to take I wanna care look of. look at his you army movement, to too. Yourself, okay, what, it's the most we'll just write down the macro so hatch example, timing as well. Army positioning. So he's grabbing his fifth base at about eight minutes. Eight minutes, fifth base, and macro hatch, same time. Looks like he took that a little bit before. Macro hatch at 7.30. He's unloading right now. Yep. Okay. 7.30 macro hatch. Got two marines, which is nice. And now our spire is done, so we make mutas right away. The moment the spire is done, we also scouted that he's going for widow mines. And um, and yeah, like uh, in, in in ZVT, there's really not that much to talk about. It's pretty much just what can your opponent have on the map, and it's it's mostly about army positioning, army splitting, and when to engage. So if the, if there's nothing happening, there's so much so much mechanical stuff that you need to take care of. You always need to ask yourself, okay, what's the most important stuff that I'm doing? So for example, I don't have my overlords spread yet, but right now that just means that I would rather take my actions into managing my economy and spreading creep and stuff. So right now we're engaging, this could have been slightly better handled, but overall pretty decent. And now I see he's stimming into my third base. So right, right away I will pull away the drones. Already, I, I should have pre-split this against a player like Clem. I know there is going to be a second prong to this, all of this, but overall pretty decent. We split away the Zerglings a little bit, and I, I moved my queen. The speed that he pulls the workers away, I think, is something that you have to develop your intuition for. I would say for most players, it's not obvious that it's better to preemptively pull your workers away from a base if an attack is coming in, usually you think about once it's taking damage, then, ooh, ouch, I need to pull my stuff away. 
Uh, but he's pulling it really early. Basically, as he said as soon as he didn't have units there, but he saw Clem stem and forward, he pulled them away. So let's look at the relative distance he's from where is that army base, when he so starts right, to pull. Right away, I would pull away the drones. Yeah, it's not even like to his base. His base isn't even being shot at yet. And he's already pulling stuff. That's pretty sweet. I need to do this better. This is, applies to all kinds of different harass. Adept harass, liberator harass, uh, whatever. If you don't have units in position to defend, move the drones away. Protect your drones. It's better to lose mining time than to lose drones. We'll say pull drones early. If out of position. Excellent. And I already have a full page of notes. Praise God. And we're eight minutes in. Already, I, I should have pre-split this against a player like Clem. I know there is going to be a second prong to this, so all of this, but overall pretty decent. We split away the Zerglings a little bit. And I, I moved my queens there on the minimap. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but my queens are on the way to the two medevacs. And I split my a couple of Zerglings together with the Mutas, so I wouldn't lose any Mutas. So this went fantastic for us because we cleaned up most of his army and he even lost three out of the four medevacs that he had. So this is really good for us right now. So momentum is our, on our side at this moment in time. We are at 88 workers. Uh, the moment the fifth base is up, I want to go up to 100 workers. And I think I just made a couple extra workers. Or oh, actually, might have been Zerglings. And now if you have momentum on your side, you can 100? start setting up run buys. Uh, you can also set up run buys before that. So for example, I could have done that earlier already, but I just wanted to have a clean game this game and just play defensive and go up to a high drone count both both ways to play are fine run bys are always decent to have uh, especially if your opponent is going for more of a tank composition i saw the medevac exposed and wanted to get these units for free now at the same time i'm trying to hit a run by on the other side of the map i sent that zergling there to activate the widow mine i realized i couldn't get the sv so i just split a couple of zerglings there to kill the svs that are here which worked out nice, and now I know that there's a widow mine exposed here and the Venshi, so I wanted to clean that up with the Mutas. And because I am ahead, I, I don't know why oh. I'm there, that's obviously not on purpose. But because I am ahead, I'm going for a Hive and a Lurker then transition. And here I wanted to kill the Benchy first, I'm not sure why, but the, the widow mine was not active yet, so I attacked it, and then <laughs> this widow mine also wasn't active, and it just got active like while all of this was going on. So now we took a couple of bad trades there. These two Mutas that died should should probably not have died. And he's just straight up attacking us. He doesn't have any Marauders at this point though. So the, if you see an army like this, just try to activate all the mines before the fight starts. He retargeted, I think. I'm not 100% not sure, but that, uh, yeah, that, that wooden one was pretty good. So all, all you need to do is get a high banning count and then move command the bannings. You see during the fights, I tried to um, come with a little bit of a concave and then move command the first units in and then A move the units on the back and also move command the banelings. So that's that's the thing that I'm doing. And right now I'm also focus firing medivex while this is going on. You can see the banelings are always uh, move commanded unless they are close to widow mines where I try to sometimes blow up the banelings so the widow mines don't fire. These trades have been pretty decent for Clem. But it's, uh, he keeps going and we lo he lost a lot of his gas units, so the, the, these trades look uh, very good and these trades were good as well, but we're obviously out mining him. And as long as we're starting, we're, we keep killing his gas units, in the end it's not actually that bad for us. So we're, I'm gonna try to tank these Widow Mine shots with the Queens. Widow Mines don't one-shot Queens, so as long as the Queens are full HP, that's fine, especially with transfuses. He did say a, a pretty important thing, try to activate the mines before you go in. So it looked like he was leaning into the fight with some of his army and the links like the front set of links would activate them and get hit and then he would pull back activate mines before going in well with everything so now i'm gonna try to go in and again there there is just not that much left anymore from the terran 
So we go forward with the Banelings, try to focus fire the Medivacs again. And I mean, all, all of this is just micro battles. Very, very often you're gonna see me try to focus fire Widow Mines as they burrow. Okay, here, a couple of Banelings. It's micro battles left, left side from the beginning. for... And at this moment the game is... Kind of for us mortals who are not at the god tier of Lambo, it's not just micro battles, it's also making units. For him, producing Lings and Mutas with his money is like, it's the most obvious shit ever. But for a lot of people, they'll tunnel vision their army, and probably me too sometimes. You tunnel vision your army and you're over microing, and your production tab is empty. So in his production tab, he's got a lot of stuff uh, cooking up. He didn't say it in this video yet, maybe he will later. But one thing that he does is he'll have his Mutas on a control group, and they're flipping and flapping around on the opponent's side of the map doing stuff. And whenever he makes new mutas, he binds them to his main army control group first until they all group up together. Kind of over. Uh, what I should have done here and what I'm not uh, going to end up doing because I thought the game was super over so I could just kill him, but you can never actually kill Terran, is I should have split off like 10 Zerglings to go to the third base, which was entirely undefended. I will see this later on in the replay. Uh, in general, what you should do once you get an army advantage like I just did is you should try to kill the economy because you can never really kill the Terran and if you can kill the Terran, chances are you can also just kill the economy and win the game that way but that's usually the safer damage is the better way to go about this so what I should have done is I should have just split some Zerglings off to the third base which was quite obviously undefended uh, since the Terran usually have twos in these situations just to survive so that was the move for sure. I could not have killed the planetary because I didn't have enough bandings. If I had uh, like 20 bandings left over, I would have for sure went into the planetary. <clears throat> but because I had mostly links and I saw barely any units, I tried to go for the kill. Even though I tried to go for the kill, I think that, that, like engaging there is fine, forcing him to run back. If I split off any units, that would have been so much better. So yeah, now, now we're getting into the later stages of the game and I want to do a lurker transition. The strength of this going into lurkers after mutas is that your opponent won't have any tanks. So you can hit a super super strong lurker timing. Well you can do one of one of two things. You can A, try to attack with the lurkers and your opponent will be forced to counter attack you. And like try to go into your YOLO base trade. And B, the, sec the second option that he that uh, that's gonna happen is you can counter attack with all your Ling Bane to some base that's that you think is exposed. And then try to hold his main army with the lurkers. And if his main army goes to the Ling Bane, then you can attack somewhere else with the lurkers. Either way, it was supposed to be meant as a surprise. And it didn't end up quite being one. So, so now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send all my Zerglings to counterattack while trying to defend with the lurkers. because I, I think I like that idea better. Instead of trying to hit a lurker timing uh, against Bio. So he's attacking with heavy Ling Bane hit and lurker defense in the late game. Heavy Ling Bane hits... Link slash Bane hits. Lurkers defend. I guess I don't need to say late game because you don't make the lurkers until the late game anyway. Heh! No, he can't have any tank ghost, right? Because so far all he saw was Link Bane Mira. But he, he left a lot of stuff at home, so now we're gonna just def try to defend with the lurkers and. Uh, I, I went range first, by the way. As I said in the upgrade video, always go range first on lurkers. And you can see that the pure bio army can't really engage into a big number of lurkers. We're going to get a lot of damage done here with the zerglings, which is great. And he can't really do anything. And now I'm do actually doing a big mistake, which I underestimated the Thors. And I thought he was just retreating. And I wanted to kind of cut him off here. But I end up losing a lot of the lurkers and even a bunch of the mutas. I do end up getting one Thor, but that was not worth it. Uh, that gave up quite quite a lot of momentum here. And I also lost a lot of Zerglings on the counter-attack. So, um, mostly issues with the, my camera movement and speed there. Like, uh, I could have saved all the Zerglings on the counter-attack after they killed all the SCVs. It was just a mistake of, uh, of, uh, of uh, speed, pretty much. And then the Lurkris was mostly a bad camera movement by me. I should have recognized that very earlier that I couldn't go forward there. And here I can try to find... I'm trying to find some uh, marines, trying to get that widow mine, but... I can't quite get that. And here again we're counter-attacking. Uh, I actually forgot Adrenaline Lance's game as well. That was a rough mine shot. Now he's trying to push here. He does not have either of the bottom right bases. I should have Zerglings there. I have one... I thought I had one Zergling there, but I didn't. 
So it's trying to expand forward into us, which is very, very... Um, I don't know, it's a little bit over-aggressive. <laughs> uh, I so feel like he was trying not to say it's bad. With the it's very completely fine. aggressive. I saw that the tank was attacking that one lurker, so I tried to move the other ones forward. And you can see my gas bank. At some point, now it's good to get vipers, so I started getting vipers. Okay. And yeah, our, our minute. Gas bank into some vipers. So, so far the game flow has been Link Queen, Speed Banes, Mutas, Range Lurkers with Burrow Speed eventually into Vipers. Those are the units that he has been making. General income is not as good as I thought it was because ever since the Widowmine drop I didn't properly redrone so I'm lacking a couple of minerals so I'm trying to just go mass lurker at this point. I also saw that he barely had any tanks yet. So mass lurker in general is fantastic if they don't if they don't have the setup to deal with it. So not a lot of liberators, not a lot of uh, tanks, not a lot of ghost. And now we're starting to add in vipers. Okay, so now we see his army moves away so we also move away with the army. You might have the question, how much do I leave at each base? We have a couple of spore crawlers there. I think I will leave some lurkers on that side of the map to not worry too much about like some split pushes. Here's another one of my job claim is very annoying with those. I'm going to have the one media for the rest of the game on duty against against these. I don't really want to remake media, so although it might have been might have been a good idea to like remake 10, 10 of the mutas at least. <clears throat> now he's coming in here. I already committed forward. It makes no sense to run back there with the Banings. I would have just had to tank fire, so I tried to get the most out of it. You see, you will see that I always try to get my Lurkers in a line. Otherwise, the forward Lurkers always get sniped. Also, another thing that you might realize is... Lurkers in a line, so the forward ones do not get sniped. Lurkers in a line so they don't get sniped uh does he have overseer with this or is he using spore detection i guess the ghosts aren't using cloak i think they want to oh there's a spore here uh, spore is nice for detection in front of bases i'll say spore in front of bases to assist lurkers. Always try to get my lurkers in a line, otherwise the forward lurkers always get sniped. Also another thing that you might realize is that every single time you unsiege, Clem will snipe me. And every time you see like the lurkers exposed, he will also snipe me. So now I'm trying to go for a couple of abducts. Um, I got a bunch of tanks and ghosts. He gets all the vipers though. Every time you will go forward, Ahead of your lurkers, you will lose the vipers to ghost. So, like once there are tanks and ghosts, that's the, the the counter to lurkers for Terran. In case Terran players are watching, that don't know the the counter. Um, well, tanks counter lurkers pretty much, but uh, but ghost also ghost also counter lurkers, especially when the lurkers are forced to move. Like every single time you siege forward with the lurkers, the snipe will go off, and every single time you try to run away. The snipe will go off. So this is this is how you basically trade perfectly against the, against uh, the lurkers. At this moment in time, I actually was ahead in supply. After I cleared this up, he was 150 supply with no bank, barely any ghost, and two tanks. So if you're wondering who's ahead at this moment, I think uh, I am in a very good position because he doesn't have the exposed bases in the bottom yet. So my game plan at this moment should be to kill these bases. But what I do instead. I, I see that he's taking the space right now. I actually thought this was already completely set up, but he's just taking it as we speak. Game plan should be to kill outer bases. Kill outer bases. So it's ultimately kind of a starve them by denying them bases instead of trying to get up on top of the production. Something that I was doing a whole bunch is nidusing into the main, which I feel like that's a, a fair and reasonable way to like stab at people and try to get some damage in. 
is because I saw his army was out of position there at the bottom. I'm trying to siege forward to go into his natural or towards his natural because I have so many lurkers that once I get into position, I figured I can just run up the ramp with all my non lurker units. So my, my plan was to just leave the lurkers here so he can't uh, engage into them and then go into his main uh, production. But he ended up killing a lot of lurkers while I was getting here, although we, I mean, it was some sort of trade. So now, so now we're here and now he can't really run run into this anymore with his main army. And here again, what I should have done is send a couple of units into the into the third base right away. I was very slow with this. This is already the second second or a second time that this happened where I have this position, but what I should do is try to kill the economy. Either way, this was the this was the game losing mistake though by me that I didn't that I tried to go for the kill here instead of trying to deny his bases at the bottom. Because in the end, he actually took this left base very, very early and he would have mined out before us if he never gets gets to mine from this bottom right bases. And my army was actually fantastic to just bust the planetary because I was super lurker heavy. And he was very, very light on the tanks. So uh, I, I kind of missed my timing there. And o obviously over time you will trade worse with lurkers against coast, no matter what the Muslim tells you. Um, that's just that's, that's just how it's gonna go against a good player. So I try, I tried, I felt very pressured to eventually attack because even if I get this last base on the left side up, and we're both mining from all of our bases, um, it, in the end I traded worse. So unless I think for some reason that I will end up trading way better from now on, I I will have to either deny his economy or take good trades slash kill his production and get a gain a huge momentum lead so that's why i was this aggressive with the lurkers this is why i'm sieging forward this is why you always see Zerg zerks with lurkers attack instead of doing nothing because you can't really do nothing the, o the only way i could have played it with, with doing nothing was until he takes this these bottom right bases i can do nothing try to get a bank and then try to engage that's fine uh okay so i think i got the the broad strokes of the game flow so we can review stuff here i think he gradually kind of loses hold of this uh, matchup here. He tried to go in for a big attack. His minerals are pretty low, and I think the bases that he has here are getting starved out a little bit. So let's just go over this ZBT and kind of rehearse what we gathered so far. Uh, the build order that he was opening with is 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool. The first overlord goes over the third to check for proxy and then toward the main and sits in the Hellion move out spot. The second overlord checks by the fourth and then goes back to the natural to look for bunkers. He recommended mixing up the third base timing compared with the overlord timing. So sometimes you can take a third hatch before 20 overlord. Uh, sometimes you should take your 20 overlord and get your queens out earlier, maybe four queen opening if the SCV is patrolling. And then Ling's move command to shield the attack drones but don't chase. You want to creep the natural, inject the main with the first energy cycle. Forward overlord scouts a Hellion move out lane plus medivac for hellbat attacks. Eight to nine queens and 16 lings for defense. He recommended nine against Banshee. The 16 lings are for catching the Hellions but they don't really want to chase off creep. And he went for a 420 scout to see what the opening build was. He looked at the natural and looked at the depots and saw that it was 3cc based on the lack of depots. That was a new thing that I didn't know. Uh, 430 lair and gas in the main at the same time. And he also took a bane nest. So 430 lair, another gas and bane nest all in the main. 440, he took spores against a 3cc banshee opening. If it wasn't 3cc and it was banshee, then you would take them at 430. At 5.30, he's at 90-ish supply, which I want to compare with one of my replays here. And he had three base saturation. That's when you want to take your fourth base and the rest of your gases. 5.45, he took double Evo and Aspire. And his objective during this whole phase is to creep and block the Hellions. And he's going up to 80 drones with a 7.30 macro hatch. The first double medivac can hit at around 7.30 or so. He's taken his fifth base at eight minutes with an overseer scout at the same time. Pull drones early if your army is out of position to defend them. 
100 drones for the late game when he's going hive and lurker move command your banelings when you're engaging into the army and let the terran focus them down and kill them sometimes he would blow up mines activate mines before engaging if you get ahead in army hit the terran economy so he was talking about using big lurker pushes to deny outer bases uh, heavy ling bane hits while the lurkers defend is another way to approach it Gas bank goes into a few vipers once you have your lurkers up and running. And he talks about having your lurkers in a line so you don't have some that are jutting out and too far forward which get sniped. If they're in a line then the lurkers can kind of protect each other. And then you want spore in front of bases to assist lurkers. Just gives you detection against ghosts and mines and stuff. And then kill outer bases. High lurker count can bust planetaries. Fantastic. Well, that's a cool ZVT game flow from Lambo. I will compare that with my play, but I think a lot of those benchmarks and things you could just practice in an empty custom game. But yeah, a few surprising things in this that I didn't know about. Uh, the Terran that he's playing against obviously is going to be stronger than Terrans I'll face at my MMR or Terrans you'll probably face at your MMR, uh, which means that if your timings are a little bit later, it's usually not the end of the world because your opponent's timings are also going to be a little bit scuffed. Well, cool. We'll call this a ZVT study of Lambo's Lingbane Muta into Lurker Viper style against Bioterran. Thank you, Lambo, for letting us study your content on stream.